Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship and sex alchemist, Milica Jelanić. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome to The Pleasure Zone, where we're going to talk about all things pleasure-related, sexy times, and all good things like that. Yes, I had to throw in sexy times because I actually have a really great idea and I just want you guys to stay tuned for just hearing that word. I'm just planting a seed for the future of some crazy, amazing, hilarious ideas I have coming up. Uh, So just, you know, just keep it in mind that I will probably say that with a crazy accent in the future. You'll be able to see it and it'll be hilarious because... I've been laughing at my own self in my own mind while I think about sexy times. And just saying, I think you're going to love it too. And and for those of you who just started listening, you're like, oh my God, who's this crazy lady and what is she talking about? Uh, my name is Milica Jelanić and I am the host of The Pleasure Zone. And not only am I the host of The Pleasure Zone for the last five years, I'm also uh, an entrepreneur and I run my own business where I work with bodies, health, and I work with all kinds of things to allow people to have more ease and pleasure in their life, whether that's through body work, energy work, or or a variety of different modalities that I use. Uh, My target really is for people to be able to walk around on this planet, and whether they're walking or in a wheelchair, but (laughs) whatever their situation is, is that they're enjoying life uh, at least 100 times more than they were uh, before they met me. So how fun is that? (laughs) So I hope to, um, if you're looking to have, you know, a little bit more joy and fun in your life, that uh, having a session with me, um, being a client of mine, would actually bring a hundred times more joy into your life, and I look forward to facilitating that in the future. So um, tonight we're talking about a super yummy topic. Why would we do that? Because why not? It's the pleasure zone, and we get to talk about all kinds of things that are often um, things, they're often topics that a lot of people shy away from, and they're sometimes also topics that people downright want to avoid in their life, and that's totally cool. And that's where I come in to invite you into something that's a little bit more ridiculous, a little bit more crazy, a little bit more fun, and give you some ideas. And a lot of the ideas are things that I've either experienced myself, researched, um, or I am learning about. And tonight's show was definitely sparked from a course that I'm currently taking. Um, I'm taking a course in its a sex and intimacy coaching class. So after the when I'm done my many, many hours of study and testing, I will be qualified as a sex and intimacy coach, and I'm very excited about that. Um, my friend and colleague definitely um, was a major contribution for me choosing this, and she's an amazing coach too. So shout out to Christine McIver. If you would like business coaching, uh, listen to her show, Inspired Choices. She is the owner of this network, and she's a phenomenal business coach. So total kudos and shout out to her for kicking my ass into gear to stepping into more of what actually brings me pleasure. So, you know, definitely having somebody on your side. And even though I work with people all the time, it's always good to have somebody have your back. So, you know, by all means, if you are feeling like, you know, you're doing it on your own, definitely check out some some coaching because it can def- it's one of those amazing ways that it gets you to create more in your life. It's not really about you sitting around telling your sad, sad story. It's about you stepping into what you'd like to create in your life. And, you know, some of what I do is I do listen to people's sad stories, and then I invite them into a different reality. And I have so much fun doing that, whether that has to do with their health, whether that has to do with their um, intimacy level. And I had so much fun this week. I've worked with several people this week already. It's like the universe knew that once I stepped into this sex and intimacy coaching, that uh, people were just starting to come out of the woodwork in the funniest ways, 
to saying, so you're the sex expert, right? <laughs> and this week alone, I've had three instances where people were actually um, regarding me as the sex expert. Um, I had a call to actually be interviewed on um, like a nationwide uh, interview, sort of I ended up being worldwide in the end, a radio station by like some pretty top-notch interviewers. I had a few clients who don't normally talk about sex and intimacy with me. They usually talk about um, other things that I, they would like to have some insights into, more usually regarding business, but they completely let their guard down and talked about um, they completely talked about sex with me this week, which was amazing, and I hope I contributed some great tools uh, for them to use in their relationship. Um, it, it's just been really fun, and I've received um, actually I've received a couple of uh, messages on Facebook as well, asking me about interesting questions that people have about uh, creating greater intimacy, having more fun with their bodies, and enjoying the bodies that they have, or how they can enhance the bodies they have so that they can enjoy um, and have more pleasure with sex. So really freaking fun. I'm I'm having like a really wildly fun week, and and that has been um, such an inspiration. It's just so fun that when you start. You know, five years in and now, like, people start to recognize my expertise, and I love that. But you know what it comes down to is that I started to recognize my expertise and not be so shy um, about really owning it um, and taking this course, which my coach, Christine McCaver, actually was a major contributor to get me to look at where I was holding back. And for me, it was um, thinking I needed to ha- thinking that I need to have um, certain uh, certifications, and they definitely helped me for confidence and um, so having having and knowing what's stopping you can definitely contribute to you creating a better life that's way more fun and talking about more fun we're actually going to be talking today about how to have a seductive sensual and stimulating touch don't you love those words seductive sensual and stimulating touch mm, isn't that mm, that's just like fabulous Seductive touch can be as amazing for the giver as it is for the receiver. And wouldn't it just be so fun to learn how to have seductive touch that is sensual and stimulating? And there's so many kinds of touch that are both seductive and stimulating in different ways. So tonight we're going to be exploring touch, and we're going to be exploring different kinds of touch that your lover would enjoy, that you would enjoy um, and I'm actually going to direct you guys to a website that I had a lot of fun with taking a, I took a little quiz on there to find out what my um, my touch categories came down to, and I'll share that with you guys as well. And um, the woman who I was using as a reference for this, her name is Jaya. Her website is MissJaya.com, so M-I-S-S-J-A i y a dot com mrs jaya dot com miss jaya dot com and she one of her expertise is in something that she calls the erotic blueprints breakthrough and so it's a whole method of learning how to touch your partners and other people and um it was something that I saw that I was taking in my sex and intimacy coaching course and it had me get kind of curious and I might actually take some further training with her because I'm quite fascinated by her work. And um, you can get the on her site, you can actually go in and you can click on and do the survey. And you can find out through, through answering the questions. There are 25 questions. You can do it real quick through answering the questions um, and then send you just give your email. Of course, it's a great way to get on somebody's email list. And yay, Miss Jaya, for having a great idea of how to collect email addresses. Um, they do send you the response of where you're at in terms of your um, your your blueprint. And she talks about five different kinds of touch. I do know that there are more kinds of touch than that. And she's talking about the kinds of touch that bring love, um, the sense of somebody being loved. So we will talk about that because I think it's also important to talk about the things Um, and the touches that don't have you feel like you're being invited to being loved as well. And sometimes when there's been abuse or there's been neglect in your life, a lot of the touch can be very conflicting and confusing. So knowing what is 
enjoyable for you, really truly enjoyable for you, and knowing what triggers you or where you may have some things that you'd like to heal. I think all of those are very important um, in learning what is seductive, what is sensual, and what is stimulating for you. Stimulating is one of those things that can go both ways. Stimulating can get you very happy, and stimulating can get you really angry. So just be really clear when I'm talking stimulating doesn't mean erections all the time. Stimulating can mean evoking emotions. So we will be talking a lot about that in this particular episode and how how touch actually does that. So we have these, you know, we're basically like these biochemical electrical um, beings that have like massive amounts of photons shooting at us all the time. Um, these combinations of water and massive amounts of different um, uh, minerals and vitamins and all kinds of things. And together, that creates us, these human beings. And we have this crazy capacity that when we touch somebody else, their entire body responds. If their body is functioning and um, even when people are in a coma and you touch them, they respond, I know, I've done it. And you can actually um, start to become very aware of how your touch impacts other people. And, you know, one thing is to sit around and just, you know, touch somebody and then be aware of how you feel, how their body feels, and noting how their body responds. Maybe they pull away from you. Maybe they lean into you. And I find animals are fabulous for this because they're just so honest about how they feel about being touched. Dogs, cats, horses uh, especially. I noticed that I I did work on a horse once and I was petting it. Uh, I've worked on a horse several times, but this particular time I was working on a horse and the horse leaned right into me. And next thing you know, um, the horse... uh, I can't remember the technical name for for it with horses, but basically the horse um, like freed its penis. I don't know how else to call it. Kind of like an erection, but apparently horses only do that when they're very comfortable. And this horse was willing to like put all, you know, it's a big horse. and, And I was like, like pushing into it and it was pushing into me in a very like cuddly way. And you can tell if the horse wanted away from me, it would have pulled in the other direction. Um, it would have moved away from me, but this horse was moving like right into me, like thoroughly enjoying touch and thoroughly enjoying um, everything um, that was going on, which is really cool because so many times, uh, you know, with people, we don't really think about uh, how they're responding. We just figure we're doing what's supposed to work. We're touching them in a way that's supposed to turn them on because we watched that video that said this is supposed to work. And I do have a funny example of that I actually tried that. I watched a video, gave me some new tips, thought I would try it. And for the first time in six years of being with my husband, he was like, no, stop. What are you doing? I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I get experimental sometimes and not, it doesn't always work in my favor. But um, he was honest about it, which was cool because I'd never actually had him give me feedback uh, in that way verbally. And it certainly evoked verbal feedback. So now what I know is if it's not working for him, he'll tell me. If it is working, he won't tell me. That's how I know how my husband communicates with me. So it's pretty funny. Um, I'm going to actually share with you guys some exercises that you can do, exercises or playtime that you can do with your partner um, that are going to be really fun. And So what I invite you to do is um, during this break, I invite you to get um, a piece of paper if you want to make some notes. And um, that way you can, when you come back, or you can re-listen to this show many times over again and just know that information will be coming after the first break. Um, Make some notes because I think this fun playtime will really be uh, something that you might want to choose. And you might want to have some notes of ideas of what um, some of the options are regarding some of these touches. And do keep in mind this uh, this particular stuff was something that I was inspired by Miss Jaya from, so I totally want to give her full kudos. I do think her work is beautiful, and, um, and I am going to add to it as well. So we are going to be heading to our first commercial break. I just want to remind you that you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time? 
for a totally different sexual evolution. Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Milica Jelenic, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Milica Jelenic, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelnic. To participate in the program today from the U.S., call 815 880 TALK. That's 815-880-8255. From Canada, dial 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Or send your questions or comments via email to info at MilicaJelenic.com. Now, back to the program. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome to the Pleasure Zone, where tonight we're talking about seductive touch, sensual touch, and all kinds of touch that's going to have you feel pretty darn good. Seductive, sensual, and stimulating touch, and how to have it, and how do you know that you're having it, and what's the difference? Because one person's seductive touch might be a massively repelling touch to somebody else. So keep in mind that not all um, sensual touches are going to be things that invite people to be turned on. Not all seductive ways of being are going to actually seduce people. So knowing your partner is really helpful. For example, um, I like to think that, and I have to clarify this with my husband later, but I like to think that my greatest seduction of my husband comes when I'm being a total goof. If I'm walking around and I like, you know, show him my butt cheek and then I walk out of the room and I like laugh because I'm being ridiculous, um, usually that for him is, all right, that's cool. Uh, if I was trying to like do a dance and be like seriously sexy, I, it, or like being very serious about it, it's so out of character of who I am that uh, he'd probably be confused and wonder what the heck is this. So definitely being yourself can be one of the most seductive things uh, you can choose. And I'll find out because maybe he'll come and listen to my show now and I'll find out. Um, Mike, I'm asking you a question live on the radio, and I just want to know, when I'm being a goof and I walk around showing my ass off to you, is that the most seductive thing I could do? Or like trying to be sexy, is that better? Yeah, so me, yeah, he said that is seductive. So me being a goof is actually more seductive. So I just wanted to clarify. I didn't want to speak on his behalf, and that's the first time he's, like, said something on the radio, guys. So just, like, very exciting moment here for all of us. <laughs> and um, it's really fun because when you do know your uh, what works for your partner, you can just keep choosing it, right? It's pretty cute. And and that's cute that you guys heard him. I love that. He's so he's so cute. He's so handsome. I'm so lucky. And um, today um, I'm going to talk to you guys about some of Jaya's ideas, which I like. And so she talks about five different kinds of touch. And one of them she talks about is kinky touch, energetic touch, sexual touch, shapeshifter touch, and sensual touch. 
And I want to share with you guys my results from her test. Um, and then I'm going to describe these to you so that you can start to go, oh, she's like a what, what? So my test showed that I'm 28% kinky, 28% energetic, 20% sexual, 16% shapeshifter, and 8% sensual. So pretty fun, I must say. Now, in the little class that I took for my um, sex and intimacy coaching, they actually didn't describe, uh, I didn't like get a lowdown on shapeshifter so much as she mentioned it for like a minute or less, and uh, and sexual was very um, kind of mentioned, but like to the side. So I'm going to give you some interpretations of what I felt about that, um, but also and adding some information. So I'm going to start with the ones that that are me the most, so kinky touch. And for me, I, I am, I guess, kind of kinky. I just never really thought of myself that way. Um, kinky touch is sometimes having a little power play. It's not necessarily going to the extreme of like BDSM, although it could verge on that. So uh, for those of you listening and you're not sure what is BDSM, BDSM is uh, bondage, dominance, and sadomasochism. So that can be where, you know, you're being tied up. There's definite power play. Uh, for me, I don't require the kind of intensive power play, but I do like when somebody's in charge. So I like I like when my lover's in charge. I like to have... Um, I like to be done from behind like a pro. Like I like, there are certain things I like that are uh, where I'm not necessarily in the dominant role. So a little power play is pretty fun for me. Um, one thing I want to mention is that uh, Ms. Jaya does talk about the erotic blueprints are uh, something that she uses as learning how to touch men in a way that they feel loved and connected. But I like to look at this as non-gender specific so that we can really like get that all of us, maybe all of us, uh, could enjoy learning how to be with each other in a really fun way. So me and my kinkiness, power plays, you know, I like a little scratching, I like a little roughness. I don't really like marks being left on me, um, although some people who are into kinky like, you know, little bites and things like that. Some spanking. Who doesn't like a little spanking? Although some people don't, right? And this is good to know. So you can kind of determine what kind of touch your lover really enjoys. Um, they like, you know, kinkiness is more intense sensation. So, for example, me, I like a good, like, nipple rub. I like my nipples to, to like, be seen and felt and, like, for, for, you know, just so you know that they're there and they're alive and they got lots of feeling sensations that, you know, you can tweak a nipple in a way that can just, like, go right down to the clitoris and you can create orgasms in ways that are phenomenal. Um, and some people don't have that same kind of reaction sensation with their nipples, but, man, I do. And it's, um, uh, I think it's the greatest gift. It's like walking around with three clitorises. It's a wonderful world. But if you have a partner that doesn't know that, they don't know that you've got three clitorises, then they might only be focusing on the one, and then you're, um, you know, you're kind of like losing the gold there. You know, somebody's trying to go for the gold, but they forgot there's like, there's three, there's three main active points creating this giant triangle of love on your body, nipple to nipple to clitoris to clitoris to nipple is like a giant triangle of love. It's a wonderful thing. So that's me. Got some kinkiness in me. I do like power play. Like I like giving it back a little too. So I like to be able to, uh, like a little tying up doesn't have to be like aggressive, but you know, nice silk ties and just like restraining for a moment to be like fully in charge, is just as much fun for me as when um, my lover's taking charge. I like it both. It's both fun, um, though. It's not like my husband's like main thing in life. So doesn't happen often because that's not his uh, like language of, of touch. So it's really good to know what your partner's touch language is or you know how people talk about love language. I think really what Jaya is talking about is like a touch language here, and it's pretty cool. So my other one was 28% energetic, which has to do with um, – you know, let's let's go from the extreme of light touches, like stroking, like in a, in a sort of almost tickling, light fingertip touches, um, especially in all the erogenous zones, like the obvious erogenous zones, but also the erogenous zones that are their particular erogenous zones. And this will really help you to get to know 
what your partner's erogenous zones are too. So you can, you know, stroke those parts behind the leg that for some people they might like and some people they won't. Um, I'm going to tell all of you guys these different kinds of touch, and then I'll give you the sort of way that uh, Jaya uh, works it so that you can determine what your lover's um, like way of being touched is. So um, I'll give you all this first. So the energetic touch, those light touches, you know, just sitting holding each other, eye gazing, very tantric kind of stuff. Uh, you know, you could even be sitting and holding each other where your genitals are just touching, um, your bodies are starting to touch, and there isn't a lot of activity necessarily. It can be actually very calm and quiet, almost like meditating um, and, and just being in each other's presence. And for me, energetic touch is so much about, like, being completely present with another person um, and, you know, like hovering over their body so that there is, like, that it is solely completely energetic. Uh, and to me, energetic touch can be something that you can do from a distance where the other touches are not something that you can pull off from a distance. So the beautiful thing about energetic touch is that when you can receive energetic from people or energetic anything from people, stimulation, um, over time it becomes less relevant about distance and space that you start to get that photons, you know, these light emissions from our bodies travel, they're traveling at the speed of light, which is incredible. And so they can actually travel from one person to another, super speed. And so you can connect to your lover um, ridiculously fast. And if you, you know, want proof of that, definitely check out information on photons and quantum physics, learn more about it. But it's all in there. It's it's actually there's so much information about how we we are basically composed of light and we send we are transmitting energy all the time. It's fascinating stuff. So, you know, just know that energetic touch is light, but it can also be, and this is my addition to it, can be something that you can actually do from a distance, which can be so much fun. I dare every single one of you who are listening right now to just experiment. Experiment with maybe your lover's gone away. Maybe your lover's in another room. Um, maybe they've gone off to work when you're listening to this. But I dare you to just be really present with your own body. Then connect with your lover's body um, just by thinking about it. And just think about their body and then you know, start to get the sensation of of what it would be like to touch them, where you would like to touch them. So you can connect with them so fast and then allowing them, the funny thing is their body will respond. And their body, whether they're conscious or cognitive of it, their body will respond. And in response, you will probably receive something back. So be willing to just be present and see what shows up. It will be so much fun to experiment with long-distance touching that I think you'll be surprised how much you you can get from it. And um, it kind of starts to open up the world of loverships for you, you know, because now, like, energetic touch can invite uh, lovers from everywhere and anywhere into your life, and it's STD-free. You're not cheating uh, that's my interesting point of view because it's all energetic connection and we're c energetically connecting to each other all the time. This is just with um, clear conscious um, connection where you know you're doing it. But, you know, people are forever masturbating and thinking about somebody else or masturbating and thinking about porn stars. And I often wonder if porn stars are super, super aware of energy, how their bodies would respond to people jacking off to them all day long just fascinating to me. <laughs> so it, I think that you guys are going to thoroughly enjoy just playing with the whole idea of, oh my goodness, like, and think about like some of the lovers you've had in your lifetime that you really enjoyed. And how fun would it be to just like totally tantalize them, um, see if their bodies respond, see if they respond. I bet you that you will get the most random, strange phone calls, connections, and people writing to you after like years of not talking, and they'll be like, oh my God, I was just thinking about you. Um, and you're like, yeah, you were. I was just seducing you from afar. Uh, our energy can be the, one of the most seductive things in the world. It is 
even more so than pheromones, quite frankly. Her energy is like sexier than pheromones. Um, and I, I like to think that because biochemicals are freaking slow, but energy and photons and light is super fast, way faster than biochemicals. So, you know, your biochemical responses, they have to go through all these different parts of your body, and then they ramp up and they change. That's true, they work, but photons are way faster. So I dare you to send energy to your lover and see how they respond. I think you're going to like it. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices and Work. Go enjoy feeling up your lover's present, past, and future. And we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yanić. To participate in the program today from the U.S., call 815-880-TALK. That's 815-880-8255. From Canada, dial 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at... InspiredChoicesNetwork.com or send your questions or comments via email to info at MilicaYelenich.com Now, back to the program. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome back to the Pleasure Zone. I hope you enjoyed my commercial about sexual magicism. It's one of my favorite classes to facilitate because how much fun is it to invite people into orgasmic energy? I tell you, it's super freaking fun. If there's like a chart from zero to 100, it's like off the freaking charts fun to facilitate people into orgasmic energy running through their body and bringing that to their life and utilizing it to create their universe and their world and expanding other people's universes around them Oh my God, it's freaking delicious. I know you would love that course because if you're listening to this show, you're all about having fun and experiencing pleasure in your body. So stay tuned because there will be a live class coming up for that, which I am uh, going to be having once a year. But you'll also be able to get the program off of my website um, likely in the next month or two. I've just rammed my life filled with classes. So I've, I've been postponing some of these things a little bit. But you will be able to find the course on my website. Uh, you'll be able to get it there, um, have access to it, and be able to play with it uh, at your leisure. And even though it's 21 days of sexual magicism, you can do it at your leisure whenever you like. And uh, you could use, do it over a year if you wanted. And I love, love, love that course. And I know for me and from uh, quite a few people that have responded to me, and I should actually put out some testimonials on that, um, that there are uh, people who have been in, in that class who have said that they never felt like they could receive, so women, for example, who said they didn't feel like they could receive sexual energy from other women, and that changed for them. That didn't mean that they had sex with women, but they started to open up a lot of their life that they were refusing receiving, which changed their money and flows, which changed their joy and their fun and the things they were choosing. And I just love when 
things are just so um, natural and useful for me, and I can pass them on so that other people can utilize what for me is like breathing and for like other people is like a tool that they can add to their life. And, and you know what? That for me is where I learn the most as well, when people just do things that is like so natural to them. It's like breathing, but they realize that they have something amazing there that they can um, share with people and facilitate. And like life can be so much more fun and easy for sure. So um, when we left off, we had talked just a little bit about energetic, uh, the energetic touch. And I think we dived into that pretty good. So I hope you guys were enjoying during the break, feeling up your lovers, past, present, and future, all over the world, and then really enjoying connecting with their bodies and just being present with you, um, having their energy show up in your world, like as if they're standing in front of you, and then playing with them and having so much fun. You can even just do those light, gentle strokes on them. You know, just even while they're there energetically in front of you. It's all a holographic universe, isn't it? Um, so it's good times. And Okay, so next we're going to talk about um, sensual touch. Sensual touch is where um, I only have 8% in the sensual world, and that's kind of funny to me because I do a lot of body work, which I, I ironically always thought of my work as sensual, but maybe I'm more kinky. Who knew? Um, again, I took the test once. Maybe if I took it again, I'd fall into another category because that day I was feeling particularly kinky uh, for sure, and I think things shift a a around for me a bit, which is probably why um, I got you know 16% shapeshifter where I would probably um, – switch up my styles here and there uh, once in a while, trying other things and not it's solely dedicated to one particular um, way of, of uh, doing things. So sensual, um, and, and when I do read sensual too, I get why some of the sensual is not really something that I prefer, but I do like to gift. So that's all interesting too, and that's something to look at, like what touch do you like to gift as much as the person likes to receive it's pretty key that you actually like to gift those types of touch as well. Otherwise, there can be a conflict, and it gets a little awkward and a little strange. So uh, sensual touch is where you, you know, bring out the massage oils, where you can, like, strip down to your, you know, skivvies, and your partner's totally naked, and you are, like, massaging them full body. You can use, like, your elbows, your full arms, going up and down their legs with like the um, the flat of your arm and just like really being deep into their muscles like a massage. And usually touch that is more sensual is going to have like your whole hand just wrapping around body parts, you know, wrapping around shoulders, buttocks, calves, um, wrapping around the balls, wrapping for you know around a woman's breasts and but it's really where you your body is like feeling um the full hand on it so you can do things so so that you don't have friction adding things like oils and massage oils can make it so much easier so you don't end up giving somebody like an indian sunburn which would probably fall under the category of kinky more than sensual so you know, other things that can be like um, sensual are lighting the candles, having the music. It's very creating the mood, bringing in the silky sheets and having those baths together. Um, I personally don't have a bathtub big enough in my house for me and my giant husband. He's not like massive. He's not chubby, but he's like six foot two. And I'm almost six feet tall. And having two people on our bathtub, not so practical. Maybe in another house in another time. But um, you can also be holding body parts and moving them. So when I work on people, my work is actually very sensual because I will hold shoulders and cup the whole shoulder and I'll hold um, somebody's hip bone and I'll cup that and I'll move like entire parts of the body, full hand movement. Um, and even though I don't do massage, people do find that their bodies relax in a way that a massage um, is intended to relax the body. And, you know, having those, like, full 
full body experiences, body on body. And, and when I work, I actually work really when I think about it. My body is often um, in a lot of contact with another body. So I might lay, lean my whole body into your body um, in order to create the movement that I'm looking for. And, um, and I actually like having that done to me, which is funny that it's not on uh, my charts. But I think according to what the... Um, the quiz was asking it wasn't like matching what their questions were about sensual and my idea of sensual is a little different so what is your idea of sensual your idea of sensual might also be a little bit different um, where I feel like I can be very vulnerable and sensual with my clients and that allows them to just let their bodies uh, release and let go and I have this beautiful client that came this week and he's so funny he just um, said to me, like, after the first time I worked on him, he actually said, you know, I actually trust you. I trust your hands. I trust you. And w when you touch me, I just fall asleep. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's pretty funny. And I know his wife, and um, I know their life uh, not well. Um, they're not really super close to me, but um, I just find it really sweet and fascinating how much he was willing to be vulnerable enough to tell me that because that's so not his character, um, but also the gratitude he had um, that he felt safe in my hands. And I think with sensual touch, it's very key that the person feels safe in your hands uh, so that they don't feel like they're threatened. So what can you be or choose that would allow somebody to feel safe in your hands? And I think that's where the invitation and the seduction comes in. You, when you have this like willingness to be a safe zone for somebody, they can tell you anything and they can be themselves around you. And that is this invitation that just has people choose you. They feel like so excited to be in your presence and to be around you because you've basically um, seduced them with your presence. They, you've seduced them with the energy of being vulnerable, you showing up. Um, is one of the most phenomenal seductions out there, just being totally you, totally vulnerable, and allowing people to um, be themselves with you and allowing them to relax and for them to know that you've got their back. 110% you're there for them, and um, that's definitely my uh, target when I work with people is for them to know not only do I got their back, I know how to manipulate their back. I know how to move it. I know how to give them um, more ease and embodiment. And the more people are willing to receive it, the more phenomenal the session gets, for sure. So what is, uh, getting back to sensual touch, is like what is sensual touch for you? And start to play with that because it is very different for a lot of people where um, for some people having a massage is quite a turnoff. It, it's actually quite repulsive and they just don't want that kind of movement on their body. Uh, for example, my mom, uh, massage is so out of the question. She is not interested, but if it's um, if it's if there's different methods of movement that she thoroughly enjoys, however, certain types of like intensity not her thing and that is what some people would actually call sensual um, but in her universe it's actually more like abuse so being really clear with who you're with as to the type of pressure the direction the movement because that some people are very sensitive and aware of direction and movement of energy and the movement of hands physically um, i'm one of those people who i'm very sensitive to the direction of hand movement direction of how somebody um, is manipulating my body and if it's if it's not um, following a flow that I'm aware of that my body is like showing up with it it really aggravates me so it's really good to ask people is this okay because if you're not really clear and you haven't really um, become aware of that and then asking the person that you're touching they know, they know what they like, and if they don't, this is a great time to explore it. So a lot of um, true, honest conversations are fantastic to have. And um, when we come back, we'll just have enough time to touch on some sexual touch. I might have to do an entire show just based on um, unkind touch, I'm not sure, but I think kind of know where that is, right? Things you don't like is pretty much unkind, no matter what category it falls under, 
if it's something that you feel repulsed by, it doesn't work for you, definitely say it, speak up about it, and uh, and have your own back on that because this is really about you having more pleasure. So we're going to go to our next commercial break, and when we return, uh, we're going to just dive into one more touch, uh, which is the sexual touch. We tapped into Shapeshifter just a little bit where things change quite often. We'll talk about sexual touch and a quick, quick brief um, explanation of what you can do with all of this. What do you do with this so that you know what your lover likes? And it's so fun. Um, Ms. Jaya has some great ideas for that. So we will be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly, other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today from the U.S., call 815-880-TALK. That's 815-880-8255. From Canada, dial 613 613- 800-8736 or you can Skype us at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com or send your questions or comments via email to info at MilicaYelenich.com Now, back to the program. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome back to the Pleasure Zone. We've been talking about sensual, sexual, seductive touch tonight, how to do it, how do you know you're doing it. I mean, one of the key things is feedback and asking questions because that's definitely when you know what's working for your partner. Like I mentioned, my uh, husband's um, idea of uh, seductive touch or being seductive is me walking around like a goof showing him my ass because why? He's an ass man. He loves good ass. And my ass could get probably, as long as my ass can fit through the door and we know that um, that's pretty big, that I'm good. Plus, he just changed our door size. It's six inches wider as of like last week. Super freaking exciting. My ass can get really big now. Um, more the more the love. That's what I have to say. So, <laughs> uh, we're gonna just tap into a little bit of sexual touch. Well, what do you think that is? Let's get really obvious with this. Sexual touches where all those obvious erogenous zones are. We're touching the boobies. We're stroking, stroking the clitoris, stroking the penis. Um, touching the anus, we're getting down to the nitty gritties. Touch, kissing, of course, there's that involved with sexual touch, but it can also be sensual depending on how you do it. Um, a lot of this is where you are getting more, um, more into the uh, obvious, the more obvious erogenous zones. So um, breasts, all of that, where you are, the stroking is going on. So I wanted to just mention that one because, you know, uh, some people actually don't really like sexual touch, but some people do. For me, that's 20%. I do like some some really clear stimulation happening, just like get her done. And this is also stuff where it's like just get her done. 
droplets, pack it up, get turned on, get her in. And quickies are, can be very sexual, just get in there and get her done kind of uh, activities. So one of the things uh, you can do is get all kinds of fun accoutrements that you can play with, silk scarves, get some um, different uh, paddles, get some things like uh, whips. And I sell all these things too. If you're looking for them and you don't know where to go or you're too embarrassed to find them, you can find links on Inspire Choices Network under the uh, show descriptions that you can find for the U.S. and Canada. So you can buy uh, products from Pure Romance through me as a consultant, or you can just go to Pure Romance and uh, look me up as a consultant, Melita Jelinek, and you can buy products from wherever you like in the world. It's so fun. So get your toys, get your massage lotions. Um, there's even this great candle that we sell that you can light up and you burn it, and then there's like soy oil that's not too hot. It's just really warm and you can warm that up and rub that into the body and you can also write kinky little sex messages on that because it's a little chalkboard on there and I think that's so such a fun thing to have um, every couple needs their sexy candle I tell you and so massage oils you get all these different things so that you can really this is like a time of exploration and one of the things you do is just get you take turns as a partner so one person's going to be receiving and one person's going to be doing the exploration so you can start with things like soft gentle touches like the energetic touches where you're just stroking the back and then uh, Miss Jaya talks about doing two different things, A or B, and then you keep notes and you keep track. So A might be a sensual, energetic touch, and then B might be something more kinky, like um, getting a whip and slapping their bum. And then you and then you gauge and you ask the person, which one do you prefer, A or B? And sometimes they prefer both, and you write down both, you know, energetic and kinky. And then you might try energetic versus um, more something that's sexual, so some direct contact. Um, you might try energetic versus something more sensual, we rubbing into the body. Um, and you can just keep playing with that until you can gauge which one is a preference. And then you can do some other things, like you can play with kinky versus um, sexual, kinky versus sensual. And then you kind of go through this, and you have lots of fun. Like, this could take you an entire hour or more of just fun, playful exploration. Be a good student. Take your notes. And then you have a better idea, you know, when you're with your partner or your lover, whoever you've done this with or for, because this could just be a fun experiment to do even as friends. Like, quite frankly, you could totally do this with some friends just for a fun night out. Let's find out what our what our uh, touch language is basically you know what's your erotic blueprint let's get and make it together and figure this out um, you can wear underwear if you like or not guess what your friends it's your choice so choosing the a or b experimenting playing with those toys and you can play with toys in so many different ways like you can have a whip and you can just drag the whip on the body you can spank with a whip you can get a paddle that you just lay on the body and drag on the body or spank with it uh, you can use oils in ways. Um, so one thing to be aware of is that when you are using oils, do not put them into a woman's vulva ever, around the vulva or in the vagina. Those are off limits for uh, women with um, using oils or anything scented. But you can absolutely put oils onto the shaft of the penis for sure, depending on if there's anything going on you might want to just clarify whether the person is okay with that, especially if they have any allergic reactions. Um, so check that first, for sure, for sure, for sure. I know that this is going to be a fun exploration for you guys. You're going to be able to create something with your lover that you might not have tried before, that you might not have had a lot of clarity on. And this will also help you to know how can you seduce your lover in a way that they really enjoy. Not maybe what you were thinking, but definitely what they know works for them. And so for all of you listening, I want to thank you so much for being present, for hanging out. I want to remind you that there are over 200 episodes that you can listen to on the Pleasure Zone on Inspired Choices and Network. Um, so check those out in podcast form and about over 50 other platforms. In the meantime, I want you guys to stay tuned in and turned on till next week. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. 
The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.